I was in class two when Brave Aurora came to our school and then they brought us to the orphanage. We were 45 in number, living in three rooms, two bathhouses and one toilet house. The place was congested. The grown-up people will always like to bull with the small people. Sometimes they will serve food. The grown-up will come and take all the food and eat and leave small. When we were there, we can see that people in the community, their lives were different as compared to us. We don't have someone to show us do this and do that. We always come and the food is ready for us to eat. We didn't know how to cook. At that stage, we were very young. So kind of affection and love at infancy that you have to take from your parents. And we left our parents, that's what we find it very difficult staying in the place. The we have about 4,000 children in residential homes for children. And the sad part of this is that about 90% of these children are there not because they are orphans, but due to poverty. Parents cannot afford to send them to school, to feed them properly, or the children may have a disability. However, all the studies have shown that children living in orphanages are often experiencing neglect, violence, abuse, and this results in developmental delays. Through research, there was the need to create care reform initiative to look at the growing number of Ghanaian children uh, being placed in what people know as orphanages, but they are actually residential homes for children. There is now a policy that the home should be a last resort when you explore other places and then you need to give a child care and protection. Then you send the child there. And it should be a short period. So we need to promote uh, family-based care. We need to support families to take care of their own children and not to promote orphanages. The family and the community is a best place. Institutionalization means taking children out of institutional care, such as the orphanages, the shelters, and making sure that they are placed in family settings. And these family settings can be informal foster care or formal foster care, adoption, kinship care. Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. To such belongs the kingdom of God. <laughs> ana wakafil yatima hakaza fil janna ai ne da wannan da ya karbi shanun rayuwar maraya zamu kusanci juna ne a cikin aljanna UNICEF believes that children deserve to grow up in a caring and loving family environment in the community. This is enshrined in the Convention on the Rights of the Child and in the Child and Family Welfare Policy. When you have a child and then the child lives in a family environment interacts with other family members. With love, the child's IQ develops better. Me the mama fana ko orphanage and which you see look no journey jam. Let me have a for biala. Be man da kani kachiaba katukutu obubaza alihama. Me na na ba na na me na awoban odi eti dem ani. Yeah, <laughs> Once a residential home is established, there is a need to find children at all costs to fill uh, such institutions. We have about 140 residential homes for children, out of which only 37 is actually licensed. When you come to our setting, formerly when a parent is diseased, chiefs and the elders in the town or the family members take charge of those children. There's vast difference in raising a child 
orphanage home or at home with a family. For the orphanage home, people living with them are not the real parents. So taking care of them has a lot of implication. In the home, whatever you do, you'll be corrected because either the father is there, the auntie is there, the mother is there. In the orphanage, we said we have mothers or whatever families, but how many of them are so committed to the discipline of the child? Institutions are not the best place for children to grow up. It makes them feel as if they are not part of society and they don't belong anywhere. Really, the damage done to them educationally, emotionally, psychosocially just makes them, in some cases, be a burden to society at the end. Some residential homes have understood the truth behind the institutionalization and have offered to close down on their own. It was already an idea Brevora was considering. So when the Department of Social Welfare officers came, Brevora felt it was a really good idea. The institutionalization is a process. And so a home is identified. Children are then profiled to see children that can be reintegrated back to their families, children that will be adopted, children that can be placed in foster care. When all this alternative care is sought after and all children are reunified, to any of the alternatives, then eventually the home can be closed down. Before they were sent back to their parents, first started with awareness creation through group meetings. Some were sent to their biological parents, some were sent to their extended family members. Now they are very happy, they are free, and they feel part of the society. And then they learn the family values, they now know their family ties. Social welfare also has discussions with managers of these homes on how they can use their respective institutions to help children in the family rather than bringing them into the structure. <laughs> In the house, as of now, every month they give us rice, meals for me to feed with even my parents. For their parents too, we brought them together for them to learn handwork, something that they can produce and sell. It's important to support social protection programs like the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program, the LEAP, as well as the NHIS. These will help reduce poverty and prevent family separation. Second, we urge all district assemblies to allocate and release funding in a timely manner so that the social welfare department staff can inspect the residential facilities, can monitor the standards of care and uh, reunify children with their families whenever it's possible. The Department of Social Welfare, with support from uh, UNICEF and USAID, has trained 300 foster care parents. It's now time to place children with those parents and carefully monitor their well-being. Ghana was the first country in the world to ratify the Convention on the Rights of the Child. As we're marking the 30th anniversary of the Convention, let's live up to our commitment. Let's protect children. Let's make sure they grow up in a loving and caring environment because they deserve it. These people are very precious in the sight of God. If the Lord loves them, we must also show them love. So she must Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ye zan tutuka dewa game da shanan marayu ya gwada muna in ka sa kulawa da kai maraya saboda shi ya kamata eh sunai kuko mutanen Ghana sa kulawa game da shanan marayu it's not everybody who sets up a home with the love of caring for children. Some set up these homes as businesses. If you have any support to give, please help them so that they'll be able to integrate the children into their families so that we decongest the number of children at homes to the barest minimum because it helps better than when we leave them at home.
the homes we currently have. And so I will encourage corporate bodies, please, we need your support to empower families that cannot take care of their children. We need your support to help those who want to foster parent these children. Please come in, let us join hands and make sure that we leave no one behind. Let's all support the reintegration of children in orphanages back into the family and communities and help poor families to take care of their children. This is brought to you by the Department of Social Welfare through the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection with support from UNICEF and USAID. Contact the Care Reform Initiative of the Department of Social Welfare on 0501-634-440 or email us at cri4dsw at gmail.com.